The Sims makes it incredibly easy to make movies. I think everyone knew that you could make movies with the game. I don't think we realized that you could tell a story. Then all of a sudden you notice, wow, there's this whole community out there that are making these movies. About a month after I bought it, I saw that someone else had made a movie with it. So I thought, hey, I can do that. And so I tried it, and now I'm still doing it. It changes everything making movies does. Now it's a true tool. It's a vehicle of expression through movies. There are lots of different ways that people approach making movies. And my favorite ideas I've gotten from actual objects within the game, and then kind of building the set around that. I need to plot it out, I need to write it down, really just to get my, you know, my brain flowing from what I want to see visually. Don't make your stories too long. Focus on one idea and how to really expand on that one idea. My favorite movie that I made was about a flying pig. I got the idea by playing the game and seeing the flying pig, and that's pretty much all it's about. It's just different scenes of him flying through the sky. When you're building an environment for a movie, you really are going to be thinking in terms of L shapes and squares. You're going to want to make sure that it's all single story and that the second floor above that is completely empty but matching the wallpaper. Then you can go in and use some of the neighborhood objects. You can put down city buildings or rocks so that when your sim is walking outside, you have just this amazing background. I call it my like five block radius. For movie making, it's best to build on residential lots. I try not to build community lots. There are neighborhood sims on community lots that you can't control and that come and go and walk through your shots and ruin them. If I want somebody, you know, to really relate to a character, I'll do a nice slow push into that character's face. To end a scene, you want to pull that camera out, you know, let your character leave the frame. That's a great moment to cut right there. You create this gorgeous room and your sim is just so beautiful playing the piano. But you want to make sure that you're taking the time to maybe do a close-up frame on their hands on the piano. You want a, a wide shot to establish where you are. Then you want to start playing with your close-ups, your medium shots. Learn how to lock your camera. You find a shot you love, hit your control four, your control five, and then you're set in place. You can always go back to it if you miss a shot and you're not really happy with what your little sim actors did. You should really be prepared to keep reshooting what you've done just to really make it the best that you can. As in any filmmaking, you want to think about lighting. You can move lights around off screen to make your shots more interesting. The neon pack that Nightlife offers is the best thing for movie makers. Even if it's daytime, you still might want to add some lights and create some more depth, separate your sim from the background a little bit. You've created your sim. If you put her in the bedroom and you've made a red duvet cover and you have red carpeting and maybe white walls, it's really not gonna pop out. Whatever you want the eye to land on is the central part of that scene. The background is just something to kind of enhance and make her pop out. Another trick that you can do to create more pop to your shots, create a sense of perspective. You might try placing some objects closer to the camera. Soft focus leaves, sort of cornering uh, the frames. Put the DJ booth really close up front, and then the dance floor is in the back. Put a plant right next to the edge of the frame. Peekaboo filming, where you're actually kind of looking around that or through that. The filmmaking community has come up with some great cheats. We've created all of these objects that sort of induce these animations that otherwise take hours to draw out in the game. Editing is uh, condensing time. You don't want to see a sim walk from the driveway, walk into the house. You pop the car door open, the sim steps out, and then walk into the front door. You just saved yourself 30 seconds. If you have people entering to a frame and exiting it, you can use the action of them leaving the frame to help you get into your next shot. You could try speeding up your shots, reversing your shots, keep your shots moving. If you look at most movies, shots generally are never longer than a few seconds. Another really good thing to think about is your sound design. It has some amazingly great sounds in there, so really use them. Music really doesn't hurt to get it in there if you think your story needs it. The best advice that I can offer an aspiring sim movie maker, watch a lot of sim film. You get an idea of what can be done, and I guarantee you'll see something that'll trigger your own idea, your own story process. Never stop making new films. Just keep making them, because every time you do one, you'll learn something new. And what it really did for me was allow me to be the armchair movie director, sit back and direct my cast. All that crazy stuff that who am I, sitting alone in my apartment, have, have ever thought I'd be able to do.